We're back, guys. I know you're probably getting tired of me saying that 50 million times, but you know what? Life happens. And there was mold in my wall, and I had to take down my <laughs> entire wall. I had to switch the room so the office is in a different room now. It's just it's been a, it's been a thing, okay? Yeah. Like, this is just how it goes. <laughs> yeah. But I think though, like even though you feel like you say that every time, it's real, it's authentic. We're genuine people. Like we are literally humans. You know what I'm saying? And things happen and life happens and we're just out here living life. So we like, apologize. <laughs> no, we trust don't. us. We're unapologetic. Like we always want to be Karen for the last two weeks was messaging me like, are you ready? And I'm like, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's usually the opposite. It's usually, girl, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? So yeah, no, totally. Life has been, it happens, you know? And I think that's the thing. We did, a, we did an episode on friendships, you know? Life happens and we have to be, what's it called? Give grace, you know, to to the situations that happen. Like, like you could probably see that I need to unpack and there's stuff everywhere because of our weekend. Um, so that's fine. That'll get there. I'm just going to move over this way a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, today's episode will be fun, but it's a, kind of a serious conversation. Not serious in the way of some of our conversations, but serious in the fact that there's a lot of people with opinions on it. Mm -hmm. And we kind of brought this up in the last episode about two-parent households and if both people are necessary and the role of masculinity and fathers and all that jazz. Um, yeah. But this one, we're going to dive more into the is both parents needed if one of them is I hate using this word because it's like a phrase nowadays, but toxic. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Do you want, you know, because we were talking before we before the show where I've noticed, like, for me personally, there was a friend that I just recently, maybe a week ago, got back into contact with. And she was one of my best friends since we were, like, in high school. And we stopped mm -hmm. talking because we kind of just, we went in different directions. But I became very into the relationship I was in. And my personality yeah. changed a little bit. And I was like, I've I've come to realize that you can kind of take on the personality of the person that you're with without realizing it yeah um you, they're de you know in good and bad ways you know obviously when you're in a relationship you're gonna help help each other you know with your each other's demons but i feel like that can be um it can be very toxic in a way because yeah. when you start to take on that person and then you lose a bit of yourself mm-hmm and well, your growth, yeah, your growth isn't as strong. Like you, yeah, like the things that you were doing before to grow your mind and whatever, it you then kind of fall back a little because they're not kind of really doing the same thing. <laughs> and you almost, I, I was talking to a friend about it, and she was like, you almost become exactly the person that you used to make fun of. Yeah. Or the person that you used to judge. Now you're them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But that um, had me thinking about the two-parent household thing where it's like, well, if we as grown adults can sit there and get lost in these relationships with people and lose ourselves in the process, then how are you expecting a child to get through that? Because a child doesn't even know who they are yet at exactly. all. Exactly. So they're going to take on the best and worst parts of you yeah, and absolutely. your other party. And you know what's... what's uh... And we all know nature versus nurture. Um, the person doesn't even really have to be in their life to have an effect on the children anyways. Like, I mean, they can still have an effect, whether it's positive or negative, on what they do. Like, um, oh, man, I was just talking about something about this the other day. What, what was it? Like, their parent was absent. Their other parent was absent in their life. And you can either have it go both ways. Like, they were like, you know what? I was determined to still be something, to still be great, to still do something. Whereas sometimes people take it and they can be like, you know what? My dad wasn't there. My mom wasn't there. Blah, 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 blah. And then they don't do anything with it at all. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, 
and and two, when I think about like my children, which is a little bit what I was going to get to when we started talking, was um, <laughs> how they can still that absent parent can still have somebody like you can they will do something and they will look at you or they will make a face or something like that. And it could be that, you know, you see that other parent or they can share those characteristics and traits, even though that person's not even there. Like it's, it's wild. Like they will maybe even act the same way or do something dissimilar. And they, that, that parent has never even been in contact. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's wild. That whole nature nurture thing is, is real. <laughs> like it's legit. You know, you can mean? almost take on their personality. Yes. It's, I mean, genetics, um, you know, but you can do something with it. So I think, um, the basics where, where I'm coming from with the two parent household, I, I'm going to go share a little bit of the backstory, but if you've been watching our podcast, you probably have heard me say, you know, I was a teen parent and I became a mom at 15. I've been a single mom ever since she's been born. Um, I've never had that two parent household dynamic for my kids or myself. Like my mom raised me as a single parent too. So me and my brother, um, so I've never had that. Like the thing, the, the statistics that I was looking up was from CNN health. And it was like, uh, you know, I never had that go ask your dad thing. It was always just my mom. I only, I mean, my mom was the one who didn't made all the decisions, whatever. It was just ask your mom. Right. My kids have never had that go ask your dad. Like they've seen some of their friends and it would be like, well, mom said no, or well, go ask your dad because the mom didn't want to make the decision or whatever. And, and that's fine. I feel like a lot of times the kids felt like they maybe missed out on that. But what I'm going to get to is the fact that like, okay, I'm all for the single parent. Don't, don't let me, like, I'm not preaching like, oh, single households, whatever. Like I'm all for if you have two parents in the household. Okay. Um, As long as they're stable parents, they're healthy um, mentally um, and they're safe for those kids. Like they, they can safely go and talk to each one of those parents without fear or I don't know. And, and if it's beneficial for the kids, what is happening? My alarm is going off. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, so that's, that's my only thing with the two parent household. Um, and I can go into statistics after you say that, but that is my personal opinion on two parent households versus single parenting households, you know, being raised in one and now raising all of all of my children in a single parent household. Um, I don't know the other dynamic because this is all I've known growing up and for my kid. Um, but I agree. There's something in here that, um, that I can relate to. And and I totally agree to one of the things that I had wrote down from here. Um, so I will let you share a little bit on your take and then I'll share some stats with y'all because that's what we do, right? We share the stats, we share the truth and we share our opinions. So, all right, go ahead. (laughs) Um, I mean, I'm kind of right there with you. Like, I believe, I do think that there's something special that each, that a child can get from each parent than they can't, like, there is something about the masculinity from the mom and the, or the masculinity from the dad and the femininity from the mom, sorry, um, that kids can get and that is special to that parent. But I do think that it can be worked around if the situation is unhealthy or toxic or un, you know, because you got to think you're passing down, you know, we always talk about on the show, generational cycles and generational mm-hmm. curses. Yeah. You're, you don't want your kids to grow up and see a relationship that's unhealthy. I mean, yeah, absolutely. People can sit there and talk about, well, you don't want the continued cycle of single motherhood. Well, I mean, yeah, I I could see that, but it's it's definitely harder. I don't know any single mother that wanted to be a single mother. Period. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you don't want them to look at your relationship and because they're going to look at if you look at you know people's parents or even like you and I were both raised by single mothers, but you would look at some mm-hmm. of your friends' parents and you were like, man, there were times where you're like, I wish I had that. I wish I had that relationship with the you know the we're able to see mom and dad now I'm very lucky and I have a great relationship with my father now we didn't meet we didn't really get to know each other till I was about 14 but we have a we have a good relationship now and I'm glad he's able to be in my kid's life but 
there's always going to be that I didn't have that those formative years that relationship bonding when I was younger there's something about those early years with a dad is kind of where that bonding happens and I'm never really going to have that Mm -hmm. so I can say there there is something special about those different relationships but if they're not healthy and it's not beneficial and you're just going to be trading one generational curse for another (laughs) like yeah Absolutely. And I think too, like when you talk about people with the two parent households, like a lot of people stay because of the kids, but they're really freaking unhappy. And the kids feel that the kids read that, like the kids know, you know, what? you're not happy. Like I've been there. I've stayed in a relationship that sucks. Um, that was super toxic, super unhealthy, just because I thought, well, you know, the kids, blah, blah, blah. But like at the end of the day, like you they know that like mom, something is wrong with mom, something's off with mom. And like your energy is then going to go to their energy. And like how I feel like for me, how I parented, I, even though I tried to give that to them because it was like, all right, you know, have your, you have your dad here, blah, blah, blah. Like how I parented, how I did life, like everything was just drained and it sucked. And like, I wasn't able to laugh. I didn't have joy. Like and then how does that look like to the kids there? I feel like the kids, you know, and I've heard this other places too, from other people, like the kids then feel like it's me, you know, yeah. I'm the reason why mommy's sad. I'm the reason why mommy feels is mad. And it really, I was taking my shit out on my kids and it was because my relationship sucked. I hated that relationship. I was super unhappy. And I feel like a lot of people stay because the kids that they're unhappy and their kids are not getting the best part of their mom or their dad or their parent, whatever, because of that. So like word of advice, don't stay in a relationship if you're watching this and it's crappy for the kids, just so you can give them the American dream of having two freaking parents in the household, but the parents suck. (laughs) Like, you know, and I, I have seen, I have seen couples that are completely toxic together that end up being fantastic co-parents like they master that shit like this perfection working apart it's one of those like um what's that saying we're good in small doses like i can see you for the birthday parties and the soccer tournaments (laughs) yeah no and that's the thing too like because i think you know and and i've said this too and i'm gonna just say i'm just gonna say it um like i'm trying to do the co-parenting thing but it's not really counter pairing when you're like it's, it's counter pairing because the person's a narcissist. So it's not really co-parenting, but, and yes, I can say that because it's diagnosed. I'm not just saying it just to say it. Um, I don't have a problem. My problem is when my kids are affected by the toxicity, like if, if that person is a healthy parent, by all means, then both parents should be a part of their children's life. Absolutely. Because they're both going to bring something positive to help that child grow. But the problem is when it's unhealthy, that's the problem. So then no, the part, like I always said, <laughs> what is it? No absence is better. No, no influence is better than a bad influence. So if you're going to bring bad influences to that kid's life, then you need to have zero influence on that kid's life, period. You know what I'm saying? That's just my thing. That's just what I say. Um, that seems to be what's worked. <laughs> like no influence is better than a bad one. I mean, because what good are you doing for that child? And the child is the most important part of it. It's not about you. It's not about the other parent. It's about the kid. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, I'm we're just... we're not. I mean, obviously, we're 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 pro mom, but yeah, <laughs> I have seen some very toxic mothers also that would be way better off with the fathers. So just saying, this yeah. isn't this isn't just like hating on men. Like I've seen some. No. I've seen some women that forgot their maternal instinct at the door (laughs) right oh absolutely and that's why I tried to say like mom and dad and vice versa and whatever because I do know a few a few mothers myself that it's like what in the actual like like oh my god did you see sorry to interrupt did you see that tiktok of all those moms they were asking it was like a bunch of moms and they were asking them would you kill for your child the amount of moms that either hesitated 
or said, well, no, I don't think so. And I was like, what? I would grab my slasher blades right now and smile in my mugshot. What are you talking about? Yeah, and I'm wondering <laughs> if they were trying to figure out, like, on what circumstance. You know what I mean? Well, like, some ladies were like, well if, well, if it's legal, killing someone isn't legal. Sorry. No, <laughs> never. Anywhere. Like, this isn't the purge. <laughs> like, we all have a day to just go out and kill people. This is your kids. If you wouldn't kill yeah. for your kids, why did you have them? Exactly. Um yeah, and I feel like for me, like, I was just thinking about this the, the other day, everything that I do is for my children. Like, I, I, and I thought, I did think about this long and hard, actually. I made other, mis- like, choices in my life. I should say I've had lived experiences where it's kind of like, was that really for them? Because how did that benefit them at all? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, I thought about that like the other day that kind of hit me because I'm thinking like what in the world was I thinking when I did that because I truly make every (laughs) okay every I've I've made every successful decision and every positive decision for them but then there's things where I'm just like how did that benefit my children I'm not sure um you know but it's the past and we have to live from it and learn from it and grow from it but um yeah that kind of hit me hard because I say that I say everything I do is for my kids and you know, this is my reasoning for whatever. But then I'm thinking, like, yeah, that person could have definitely been left out because that was not for them. <laughs> I should have turned my freaking alarm off before I got on here. Um, all right. So let me jump with some stats real quick. So like I said, from CNN Health, um, 24 million or a third of all children under the age of 18 are living with an unmarried parent. I didn't say single mom. I said unmarried parent. Um, they were raised... Let's see. Oh, the amount of children raised by single parents um, doubled between 1968 to 2017. That that number has doubled. So the 24 million or a third of all children is that was this was just from May 14th, 23. Um, and two parent households usually have. So what they're trying to say, which I just took this class. If you guys have never heard of it, um, getting ahead. In, ju- in a getting by world is super informational. Like there's so much information in there about like poverty, middle-class, you know, what is it called? I don't want to say rich, but we'll just say that. Um, and the thinking that goes on, I love, like there's so much that you can learn from that. But anyway, um, it said that two parent households usually have more income and resources, which I get that. So I, I mean, I agree with that in a, in a sense. Um, because coming from a single parent household and then being a single parent household, like there's not too many resources out there, like for help, you know, and I'm sure you can probably relate to that. Um, yeah. as far as like trying to get any help with anything to better yourself or to provide, like everything is like, we're, we're always in survival mode. I feel like, mm-hmm. um, and that's a common thing when you have, just one income coming in, you know, um, a single mom or parent can, oh, I did like this. This is the part that I liked. And it kind of goes with what we already said. A single mom or parent can create a much safer, stable environment than living with an abusive significant other. I love that. I love that they pointed that out because oftentimes I have learned in my support group that people stay in toxic, unstable, abusive relationships for financial reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot. You get stuck. Yes. Yeah. They don't leave because it's like, well, you know, or he has the, and, and you know what? Okay. This is going to the, the one that we did before, but the financial abuse is probably one of the hardest, I feel like, other than mental and emotional, because they will either be like, oh, you know, they get sucked in like, oh, babe, don't worry. You don't have to work. You know, I'll provide for you. Don't worry. You know, I I love you so much. And then that person has zero things to stand on. They have zero resources, zero money. When it comes time to be like, you know what? I want to leave. They stay because they can't financially afford. Where am I going to go? How am I going to pay for this? What am I going to do? And then there's that financial control that happens with that. And then they're stuck in that situation. They stay longer. Um, and personally, myself being, and I've had that financial control, um, 
that's why now I'm like, I will never, I will always have my own income, my own money. I will never again be stuck in that situation where I feel like, you know what, I can't, what am I going to do? I can't get out, but you know what? I did get out and there is ways to get out and we will maybe share that for another time. Um, and then I ended up doing better than him when I left. Well, so, I, I was joking with a friend about that. I was like, have you ever noticed these girls that do get out of these relationships? You ever heard of the the phrase, the glow up? Like mm-hmm. six months later, they'll have lost 30 pounds and their yes, hair absolutely. and makeup look flawless. Yes. And they just look great because it's like you shed the extra. <laughs> that, that extra weight. I, I, I shared something about that. Like when I first started the business, um, there was something about Oh, somebody said something about losing weight. Some of us need to lose like 200. Let's say the guy was like 200 pounds. Well, you, you put like, you add what their weight was. 200 pounds of dead weight. I just lost. Yes. (laughs) Um, So, and it's true. And like, I feel like because there's so much of that weight mentally and emotionally, like lifted off of that person where they now feel like, okay, I can love me. I can work on me, you know, like, whereas everything was going into that person who was putting nothing back in them. That was another topic, but. Um, we need, we need to go into that man. one because that that kind we of definitely do that one kind of coincides definitely. with what I was w- when I got back in touch with that really good friend of mine. And this is the friend, yes. you know, I never felt so gu- guilty before about losing a friendship until it came to her. Yeah, but she was the friend who, if I didn't have money, she always paid for me. Mm. Every time she went out, she always brought me like she would if I got drunk and started to walk away with a stranger she'd be the one to like pull me back in yeah like where are you going <laughs> which by the way no, didn't happen but i'm just saying she's that type that would be like uh where are you going right like she was just there for me always helped me never made me feel bad about being a broke ass bitch <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and yeah i had never felt so bad like for years i'm talking years like i would feel guilty about the fact that we grew apart so much and yeah it just that kind of stuff you you really you look back on it and you're like man like it took over me like this this other person almost like um alternate personality right yeah absolutely i think that can happen you know um absolutely i think i found myself being like that um and and i think too as we get older I'm going to just self-disclose. Like, I just feel like I was actually just talking to um, my boyfriend about this the other day. Like, I felt like majority of my life was just trying to live out to be who everybody else kind of wanted me to be. Uh I never really could. I never really knew what it was like to like be myself per se a lot of times. And it was just kind of like always one of those things where it was like, oh, oh yeah, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And it's kind of like, or this, you know what I mean? Um, so definitely can relate to that. Absolutely. Yeah, 100 percent But the, um, those, okay, so what else? What other statistics we got? It says giving up, growing giving up. I can't read my own handwriting. Growing up in an unhappy marriage has an effect on children, which we already touched on that. In 2017, a study of the long-term effects on kids found it had nearly no impact on their general life satisfaction at all. So, and then it says, look at oh. Then this was my thoughts. Look at like famous people. How many famous people, af- af- athletes, I was going to say athletics, athletes, um, you know, entrepreneurs, those successful people that we see out there grew up in a single parent household. Like, honestly, they, they may say that, well, single parent, you know, kids who grew up in single parent households um, have a less chance of dot, dot, dot. But then you look at those who have succeeded, who have what we would consider success um, in their lives, a lot of them came from a single parent household, you know? Um, let's see, the last part it said was, the the guy who, who was talking, who they interviewed or whatever, said that he was great, raised as a great and responsible, accomplished person, despite the fact, like as he was growing up, he talked about being embarrassed. Um, and I do feel like there's a stupid stigma, stigma and shame that comes with single parent households which is crap. Um, and like, oh, well, your parents aren't married. So what? Your freaking parents are married and they're miserable. You know, they're crap. <laughs> so, I, had a, I had a friend 
who left her 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 husband was in the army and she, he was abusive and she left him and she moved and she got all of her shit together and she was trying to enroll the kids in like a really nice christian school because the public school system nowadays is just a mess but she was trying to enroll them and they wouldn't enroll her because they wouldn't enroll the kids because she was a divorcee. Like they yes. wanted, the, they wanted the dad there. Yeah. No, it was I like my dad, kids... their dad beat me. You'd rather him be here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre to me because it's like, why religion, you know, cause that's the thing. This made me so mad. Um, we were going to a church pre COVID and, um, I wanted the kids to get what they called, um, not bat, bat, maybe it was baptized, dedicated. They were little. So it was a dedication to the church. And I really like, I, I was really into the church and everything like that. And I signed my kids up to get dedicated to this church that we faith. I paid tithes to this place. We faithfully went to this church. They called me up and told me, no, we cannot dedicate your children because you're not married. Okay. What if, what if my decisions, my choices, my whatever have to do with the fact that I want my children to grow up with this faith base and to be dedicated into the church. So therefore my kids, although you can have your married couples who are unstable, unhealthy, maybe there's some abuse going on. Um, maybe they're just completely unhappy. Um, just because they're married, just because they have paper and a ring and they took those vows and I, I was livid, you know what? And I stopped going to that church like very much. So as often because how dare you deny my children because I'm an unwed mother. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was, I yeah. was very upset. I do think it's interesting. Upset. That's where I think that's where like I love religion in of itself. Like the the morality behind it and teaching you the morals and the principles and the, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I think that's where religion loses people a lot is where people confuse that for judgment and like they have any... Like the only one judging me is gonna be the big man upstairs at the pearly gates. Okay. Absolutely. Like everybody else. Oh yes. <laughs> it's Absolutely. not your job. That's talking job. to my 20-year-old about that because I was talking about decisions, you know. Him and I can have that and... conversation later. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I was talking to her about it and she's like, Mom, whatever makes you happy. You know what I mean? I said, Well, but you know, that's not according to this, or that's not according to that. And she's like, so she's like, are you talking about the New Testament mom or the Old Testament? Because like, I feel like, you know, a lot of people will be judgy based on certain parts of the Bible, but I also feel like people pick which ones they want to uh -huh. say is good or bad, or you're going to be chastised or go to hell over. You know what I mean? Like, well, this is okay. Like, I don't want to talk about religion. I better not say that. Um, a certain religion you know, alcohol in the Bible, like says, it's supposed to be bad. We're not supposed to drink. Right. But then certain religions drink, you know, like what you go up and get understand. that wine and bread. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't understand it, but you know, for me, um, to sum it up, like, like I said, you know, my mom raised me as a single mom. I never had my father in my life. They got divorced when I was three. Um, he now just passed. Um, but like, We've never been to jail. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm just telling our story because a lot of people, I think, look at single parent households like that child's going to end up in jail, that child's going to end up on drugs or whatever. Like they don't think anything good can come from it. Neither one of us has ever, my brother or nor I. And, you know, for me, yes, I did become a teen mom. So there's that statistic. But I feel like I overcame the teen mom statistic a long time ago. I graduated with my class. I earned three college degrees, graduated magna cum laude twice out of the three. Um, I have my bachelor's. I own my own home. I own my own car times two because I technically bought my daughter's. <laughs> um, you know, so I feel like as far as those, they, I mean, I, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, you can't judge or base it off of that. You have to just basically say like, what is good for the child? What is healthy for the child? Not all bad things are going to come from the fact that these children were raised in a single parent home. And what is healthy you know, for mom? You know, we always talk about on the, well, yes. We, yeah. we always talk about on this show, like you can't fill from an empty cup. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, that's but a good point. I'm, I'm about sure to put that, that, that out. I'm about to put that on a t-shirt for the merch store, Matt. Because absolutely, yes, please do. Yes, yes, absolutely. And because that's a good point. That's a really good point that you made. You, you got to remember when we talking about the generational curses, guys. You are, mm-hmm. you are showing this to your kids. This is what they're going to, whether consciously or subconsciously, they're going to repeat certain things that they see like yeah you know when we yes. had our when we had our kids you know marcus fin- found out that he kind of unintentionally had taken some of his dad's anger problems without and these had never really shown themselves until after mm-hmm. we had the kids and so that's yeah. something he had to work through because he didn't even know that part of him existed until then mm-hmm. and so, so there's stuff yeah. that you will pick up that you don't realize yeah. that you pick up exactly you have to do you? I mean, you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. You're gonna pass shit on sometimes that you didn't yeah, mean to. But yeah. do your. But best. when you know better, you do better. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And what's that saying? Children learn more from what they see versus what they hear. So it, it, you can tell a kid all day, "Don't do what I'm doing," or you know what I'm saying. But they're, <laughs> when that? they see it, don't yeah. do drugs, and then you got you got a pot plant tattooed to your neck. <laughs> Period. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> All right. They, they might they might be weird like me and grow up in a family that does a bunch of drugs and end up being like pretty much sober most of my life. And that's what I was saying in the beginning. That's exactly what I was saying in the beginning. Like you could do like take those things and be the complete opposite. You know, um, I know like drinking my 20 year old, like her dad's an alcoholic. And, um, she's like, I'm not, I don't want to be that. I don't want to have that addiction. So therefore she avoids any and all, you know, um, and she plans to keep doing that because she, she, she's heard that, you know, you can be predisposed to certain things. Like if a parent has an addictive nature or habits or whatever, then therefore the children are more likely to. My whole family. And so like, even when I had my C-section, I was off of the pain meds after a couple of days because I didn't want, Mm -hmm. there was a fear in me. Like I I try not to take anything stronger than some ibuprofen. Like I don't take any sleep meds. I don't take anything that could possibly be addictive Mm -hmm. because I not, it's just a fear of mine because I know what I come from. Mm -hmm. So that's that's those generational curses that you can guys so it's possible and it's there but fill your cup and make sure that you're raising your kids in a healthy environment and don't beat yourself up because sometimes there's stuff that comes out after those babies happen that you didn't see in that person before it's not always Mm -hmm. that you just hopped right into bed and made bad decisions sometimes personality traits don't show themselves until later when people yeah. are under a certain amount of stress or certain things happen, then these mm-hmm. demons come out of the closet that you didn't know existed. So it's not always you. It's not just you're hopping into bed and you're making bad decisions and you pick bad baby daddies. Like sometimes it's just things happen. Yeah. And yeah. Don't beat yourself well, up for it. You're not a bad person. You're not a bad mom. Like I know there's a huge stigma to it, especially with single moms. I'm actually writing a book right now, like a rom com about a single mom just because i don't feel oh, like there's a lot of them that. out there yeah and like you said none of us just sit out here and be like you know what i think i'm going to become a single mom today like it's not <laughs> like that's something that we just sit and dream about for me i didn't dream about that i dreamt about being married and i, I my was white picket fence three yes my white picket <laughs> fence my three kids that was it <laughs> Three kids, a boy first, a girl, and then whatever. That was the goal. Like, that was what I set out and what I always told myself as a kid. Um, Never once in that dream did I say, like, okay, yeah, I'm going to become a teen mom. And I'm going to be on welfare. And um, (laughs) my baby daddies are not going to give a crap about my kids. I'm going to have multiple baby daddies. And I'm going to be struggling. And I'm going to be in survival mode for the rest of my life. I just want to be... I want to be a walking <laughs> red flag. <laughs> literally, literally, you know, like nobody ever sits out and says like, yeah, this is, this is the way it's going to be. That's not the American dream. Nobody ever really, I mean, I know for, I mean, I can't say nobody, we can't speak of on everybody, but you can't speak about everybody. But um, at least for me, that was not, those were not what I dreamed of when I was a kid at all. Like I'm going to just 
you know, be in an abusive relationship and, or meet tons of narcissists. Like we just aren't things that we say or think to ourselves. So. So don't beat yourself up. It's possible, but leave in the comments, guys, let me know. Have you been in one of these relationships? Did you see yourself change? How did you counteract that? Um, What do you think about the differences in the two parents in the household? Are they necessary? Are they necessary, but separate? You know, like, tell us what you think. Um, And as always, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you sticking around when our lives gets a little topsy-turvy and our episodes aren't exactly on consistent. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And we love you guys. And we will see you next week. I promise. (laughs) Bye. Stay tuned for some good ones.